Hey there, um, welcome to the Rock Race Safety Briefing for the 2021 event. Uh, my name is John or JB, I'm here with Dave and together we are going to deliver uh, the information that you have received in your, your, your information package or your, your race package. Please do take the time to read um, that information front to back. This is just a general overview of, uh, of the finer points of the, uh, the event. Uh, I'm going to pass you over to Dave, who's going to begin, and then we will chop and change uh, as, as we go through. So Dave, over to you. What's up, guys? Uh, Dave here from Total Try Training. So I'm going to take you through um, the initial registration, setting up your transition, the swim, and getting through T1. So the first registration is on the Friday, and that's for the Rock Summer Athletes, and that's open between 5 and 9 p.m. Um, and then on Saturday for the Rock Spring Athletes, between sa on Saturday at 4 till 8. Um, on registration, you'll be given your race pack, and that will include all the things that you need for the race, including your stickers, your timing chip, um, your swim cap, and your race number. It will also include your drawstring bag, which you'll need to put your race, your run kit in for the Snowden circuit. You can either hand that in with the equipment that's detailed in the brief. JB will go over that a bit more on the run. Um, you can either hand that in at registration there, or you can hand it in before seven o'clock on the race morning. Um, but you need to make sure it is there before seven o'clock. The details of exactly where it goes are again in the brief. Transition on race morning. So it opens at 6 a.m. Um, and it closes at 7.45 with the race starting at 8. You want to ideally be ready to start at 7.55 so you're not rushing to get to the swim start. Setting up transition, relatively straightforward. The first thing you need to make sure is that you've got your race number or timing chip on show for the marshals because they won't let you into transition if they don't see that you're an athlete. And so make sure you've got your race number on show. Then you're allowed to bring in a bag or a box, which is up to 40 litres. That's to store any of your kit in. You can have, yeah, your towel, whatever it is that you want in your kit bag, your shoes all in there. But please make sure it's out of the way of any other athletes because we don't want to create trip hazards. So make sure it's tucked in underneath where your bike will be wrapped. Other little rules about setting up transitions, make sure that your helmet is attached to the bike. And um, that's a rule that the Rock have stipulated. You need to keep your helmet on the bike when it's racked. And that'll be so that the marshals can see that you have a helmet so that you can go out on the cycle. Then after that, it's a case of getting yourself set up and ready for the race, which starts at eight o'clock. The swim, let's go on to the swim. So it's a mass start. Um, so the main thing about a mass start swim is if you're non-confident or you're not overly sure about swimming with a massive group, stay at the back, okay? Don't try to get stuck right in the middle with everyone because it can be a bit of a daunting place to be, especially if it is your first mass start. So yeah, hang back, let everyone else get out in front and enjoy the fresh water at the back. The, the swim is really straightforward. So you'll start on the beach, everyone will run out and then the, the swim start will be marked by two boys. From that point, you must swim. Um, if you stop at any point and put your feet down, you're not allowed to make any forward progress. So make sure that if you are stopping to take a breather and you can still stand up, that you do stand still and that you only make forward progress by swimming. You'll start the swim by taking a diagonal right out towards the first boy, which is about 200 meters out. Okay, and then from there, you'll turn left and you'll swim parallel to the shore, um, which takes you past another couple of boys and then to the 900 meter mark. At the 900 meter mark, you'll turn left again, swim towards the shore for about 50 meters, um, and then turn back on yourself, another left turn, and you'll swim again parallel to the shore, back to um, the final boy, which is a place about 450 meters from the last turn. And then it's the last right-hand turn, swim back into the beach, 
And again, your exit will be marked by two flags and it'll be the middle slipway. Okay, so you'll be marked with two flags, so keep an eye out for them. Points with swim safety. If you get into any bother, turn onto your back, lift your hand up, okay, and just keep it up. And then one of the paddle boards or the kayaks will come out to you. And if you need assistance um, to get back to shore, they'll put you on one of the jet skis or a boat. Okay, so swim safety, it's relatively straightforward. Stay in areas that you're comfortable with. Don't get stuck right in the middle of all the, the mad swimmers. And um, it's not all that pleasant to be kicked in the face. So if you're not confident, just make sure you're hanging back. But don't panic and enjoy the swim because once you're in the water, then all the stresses go away. So you'll be fine once you're in the water. Coming out of the water into T1, okay, there's one golden rule, and that is don't touch your bike until you put your helmet on. And that includes holding on to your bike to steady yourself while you're taking your wetsuit off or while you're putting your shoes on. Just don't touch it until you've put your helmet on and clipped it in. And that's the most important rule about T1. Um, once you've got your helmet on, you've taken your wetsuit off, you've got your shoes on, you're ready to go. Okay, run with your bike. Um, again, this is when you can first take it off the rack. Run with your bike to the, dis to the mount line. Um, you don't want to be cycling in the transition because you'll get DQ'd. So make sure you wait until the mount line before you get on your bike. And um, we would advise that you have your bike in a nice low gear because it's quite a steep hill out of transition. So it'll make it easier if your bike's already in that easy gear to get going rather than trying to clunk through the gears to get back onto a low gear um, right at the start. Okay, so wait until you're past the mount line, hop on the bike, nice low gear and away you go and I'm going to pass back over to JB who's going to take you through the bike. Okay that's uh, you're setting up and uh, the swim all squared away so the um, the colour of the boys that you start between there's two blue boys that you must swim between the two blue boys we swim off to the right hand side there's a yellow boy which has got a big black flag on it around the outside of that boy, so around the right hand side of that boy. And then we're going to swim parallel to the shore along similar yellow looking boys. We get to the last boy, we'll do a left turn, swim in towards the shore, left turn around that boy, and then we will go back in the opposite direction, parallel to the shore. You should sort of see swimmers off to your left hand side going in the opposite direction. And then we will be swimming down to another big yellow boy with a black flag. We swim around the left-hand side into the shoreline where we head back into the beach and towards transition onto the bike. I think the most, um, it, it's well, worthy, uh, well worth knowing that lots of us will just dive on the bike straight into our shoes and then we'll get going. And then after two or three minutes, we might slip our shoes, our feet into the shoes. The climb out of T1 is quite steep. Um, so I think unless you're, you know, really proficient at this, there's there's probably a lot of value in putting your shoes on before getting on the bike. Otherwise, it, it may uh, take a little bit longer uh, than you might like. And then weaving all over the road to try and get your feet in the shoes. So just, just for safety, it might be worth just taking that extra few seconds to put your feet into your shoes. Um, I'm just going to cover off a few of the safety notes here as we go, so I'll be looking down. So, first and foremost, you are responsible for your safety on the bike. Uh, the lot, there were lots of marshals, there were lots of um, arrows to direct you around, but please, uh, it's, it's your responsibility for your own race, race safety. So, it, it can be narrow, it can be fast, but please um, err on the side of caution, um, just so we all get out and back uh, safely. The signs, we'll be following signs. They are a green sign, which has got a black arrow, the direction we would like you to go. And it's also got the rock uh, written on them. Lots of marshals on the course to guide you. They are there as a, as a guide. Say hi, wave at them. They'll be out all day for a long day. So uh, please do say thank you for them doing their part and allowing you to race. But again, it's your responsibility to ensure that where they have guided you, that uh, you have got uh, the, the right of way to perhaps some oncoming traffic. 
roundabouts. Some have marshals, some don't have marshals. Once again, just make sure that you've got right of way and uh, we can all get around that safely. Uh, don't take any unnecessary risks. So on a couple of the places where it gets a little bit congested, there are some stop go boards. Um, if it's clear, you'll get the go. The marshal will let you go straight through without slowing down. Um, if they've got the stop sign up, please do slow down. And if required, take your foot out of the pedal and stop. And then once you do get the go ahead, just double check that it's, uh, it's all clear for you. The big one you'll all be interested in is at Pitheli, Pitheli, I think I've said that right. Um, there is a level crossing. Um, in your race instructions, there are the timings where the, uh, the trains and the railway will be operating. If you get caught out, the marshal will take your number, but please give them a shout, let them know your number just to double check. Uh, and then once the train is gone, you'll be waved through and you will get that time back at the end of the race. And likewise, when we're coming back down the hill or back down on the, on the return leg, you know, if you get stopped, it's an extra few minutes rest that won't, uh, won't damage your race time too much. And that's what we're, lots of us uh, are really keen on. Under no circumstances are you to be paced by anybody. Is there to be any, any drafting or any outside help? So you can't have a friend out the course who's going to give you a water bottle to refuel or is going to drive in front of you so you can tuck behind the van. It's, uh, it's an individual effort, a triathlon. Um, so please do follow those rules. We will have uh, a couple of mobile marshals on the course technicians. And I think where they can, they may give you a warning if you're getting a bit close for drafting, but they don't have to just for, for safety. Um, British triathlon safety rules, sorry, drafting rules. It is a, because it's a middle distance, it's a 12 meter draft zone. And that is from the front of the, uh, the bike, front wheel of the bike in front of you to the front of your bike. If you think you're too close, you probably are. So just, just drop back a little bit. When you choose to overtake, you've got 25 seconds to get through that uh, zone and outside of the other. And if you do attempt to pass, then you, you, you must pass. So make sure you, uh, you choose the area in which you want to do that. Um, and have a little gel before you go. So 25 seconds. Um, once you've passed the other cyclist, make sure you pull in, sorry, back into the left-hand side. Uh, so if anybody's coming up behind you, you don't block them. And when you've been passed, make a conscious effort to, to slow down. That doesn't mean stop pedaling, but just sit up, maybe knock it down a gear, take a few seconds just for this, uh, the, the athlete who's passed you to, to ride away. Um, and then once they're 12 meters ahead, then, then crack on again. The, the penalties for drafting, first offense is a five minute uh, penalty. Second offence is a five minute penalty. And uh, if you get caught out a third time, um, then that is a disqualification. T2, if you've, uh, if you've worked really hard and it's a hot day, I think it's forecast to be quite warm at the moment, plenty of shade, do sit down, sit in the shade and take a few minutes if you've got plenty of time to get up to the 4K point before the, the cutoff. Uh, there are a couple of medics there. If you've got any questions, if you've got any issues, um, do please uh, speak to them and they'll give you some assistance should you need it. And it's 50K. I forgot to mention that. You should be well aware of that by this point, but the bike on the way out is 50K, another 50K on the way back. Moving on to the run, which is six kilometres up to the summit of Snowden and six kilometres down. So once you have got to transition, You've parked your bike, you've got your bag with your mountain kit in it. Erase my list. In that bag, we have some mandatory safety kit that you must have. Um, and this will be checked, possibly not everybody, but it will be checked during your registration process. So in that mountain safety bag, you need a full set of waterproofs, uh, including a hood and some trousers. Um, we recommend that uh, it's taped seams. You need to have a hat or a buff and some gloves, a water bottle and a, uh, and a carrier, some high energy snacks, sort of emergency rations uh, to get you up and down. We need a foil blanket, high factor sun cream, 
and a whistle. And like I say, this we checked during your registration process. So once you've got there, you've parked your bike, you've gone to your bag, which hopefully has got a set of running shoes in as well. You will then be directed to the path that leads to the Watkin path. It's a great trail. It's the most scenic way up, uh, up snow, although you may only be looking a few feet in front of you. So um, every now and again, heads up, take a look around and just appreciate where you are on the day. After four kilometers, it does get quite tricky, quite hard, quite treacherous. So we must give way to any runners coming down the hill. Um, they're probably going to be moving faster than you. So being able to them to move out of the way is uh, maybe a little bit more dangerous. So if you see someone coming down, just take a step to the right and allow them to, uh, to pass when they're descending. When you're ascending, try and keep to the right hand side of the path. It does get narrow, particularly towards the top of the course. And then whilst you're moving, keep eating, keep drinking, stay hydrated, stay fueled all the way up. In the race rules, the package, which I hope you've all read from front to back and you've got a list of questions to send to us, please do email us or speak to us on the, uh, on the day of the race or when you're checking in. There is a four kilometre um, cutoff point on the Watkin path. Um, there'll be marshals there and there'll also be a, a medic there. There'll be some emergency rations and some water should you need it, but please take enough food and fluid for your own ascent up and down. It's there for emergencies only. We've got a 12 noon cutoff, a mandatory cutoff at 12 o'clock um, if you are on your way up. Um, please be respectful to the marshals. It is there for your safety. They ask you to turn around turn around, head back down, they'll take your, your details uh, and you'll be given a slightly different uh, medal at the finish. If you're fit and you've, you're there before 12, we'll allow you to go to the top, touch the top, take a selfie um, and then head back down. Now it's, it's gonna be quite busy at the top, I would imagine. So if there's, there's walkers, they may may not know that there's a race on, so please uh, be respectful. And if they don't see you, it's probably not deliberate spin around and we head back down uh, to T2, which has now become T3. We get changed, we hand our bag back in, and then we will return to um, uh, the start of the race. The name has just come from me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, on the same path. Abersock. Abersock. Return to Abersock on the same 50 kilometer route. If you get stopped at the train, We'll take your time, keep eating, keep drinking. If you feel a little bit woozy, please stop and, uh, and take a moment just to, to recover. Uh, we've got a, an area to top up your water at Cricket. Uh, apologies to those Welsh speakers. Stop, refill your water and, um, and continue heading back to uh, Abersock. The only kind of final point coming into transition, which is now T1, T2, T4, T is it's quite a steep descent. You'll know that because you rode up it. Um, yeah, just be cautious, take it easy on the way down. It's not worth risking anything towards the end of that race. That's the, the bike and the run. If you've got any questions, get in touch. And Dave, if you could just finish us off on the, the last little bit, please, that'd be brilliant. There you go, so you're coming in at T4, um, again, just, like JB said, just slow down as you come in into T4. Um, Aversock is going to be a lot busier now when you're on your way back than it was on your way out. So just be careful of traffic. Again, coming in T4, you're going to get off the bike before the dismount line. So you're not going to cross that line while you're still on the bike um, because you'll get a penalty or you may even get DQ'd. So make sure you get off the bike before you cross the dismount line. Okay. Then into transition, rack your bike, helmet comes off, and then pop on your second pair of trainers. Although this is a run on the beach, we still recommend that you wear trainers for it. Okay, so it's just one kilometer run, and it's the home run. Come out of transition, you're gonna turn right onto the beach, and you'll obviously run along the beach. You'll, as you run out, you'll likely have a bit of firmer sand on your left-hand side. I would advise using that because it'll help make a good bit of forward momentum. Um, and then on the way back, once you turn, come back on yourself, 
the sand will be much softer. So it'll just be a wee bit harder going. But the most important part about this part of the race is to enjoy it. Soak up the atmosphere that you've just completed the rest of it. You've absolutely smashed it by this point and there's going to be crowds there waiting for you. And it's the best thing about triathlon is getting to that finishing shoot and just smile for the camera because you deserve it and you've worked hard. So yeah, just really enjoy that last kilometer run. Um, and then you can, you can fully relax afterwards. When you cross the line, there's just a couple of things you've got to do before we finish. Let's put your timing chip in the red bucket. Uh, there will be marshals there to remind you to do it. And um, there is a fine if you don't um, return your chip. So it's not worth, not worth missing that red bucket. Um, keep your race number with you so you can collect your bike at the end of the day. Um, transition to pick up your bike closes at five o'clock. But again, they will need your race number um, just for security reasons to make sure that you are the one collecting the right bike. But yeah, that's really it at the end of the race. Pop your timing chip away, keep your number, pick up your bike and bask in the glory of finishing the Rock Triathlon because you've earned it by that point. Um, I don't think there's much else from us to cover. Um, yeah, I've, um, I've, I've got one or two points just to finish off there, mate. Um, yeah, some call it a race, some call it a challenge. It's, it's a race for a few people just absolutely have the best day ever. Now, there's a, there's a couple of points I just want to make. One is you'll have all um, seen race instructions. You'll have signed your waiver. It, remember, it's your responsibility for your own safety on the course and uh, to make sure that you're fit and well to carry on. If you get into trouble or if you pull out at any point, please inform Race HQ, uh, whether that's when you get out of the swim or whether you're on course uh, and you either need to stop, tell the marshal and they'll contact them. But please also follow up and tell HQ yourself. The number is in the race instruction. I won't read it now, um, but please do that. So that's that's if you pull out at any point, let somebody know. Uh, make your way back to uh, the HQ, hand your chip in as, as you would normally do so you don't get fined. And probably more important than that is if you see anybody in trouble at any point, it's just a day out. It's an experience and it's an adventure, but we all want to do it safely and, uh, and I want to stay healthy. So if somebody's in trouble, please do stop. Uh, ask them if they're okay. Lend assistance if you can. And if you uh, have, have got the means, please contact uh, you know one of their family members or the HQ or holler down a marshal somewhere. Um, we do really do appreciate your, your help uh, in, in doing this. I think we've covered just about everything. We may follow up um, with a couple of more details as and when they um, come through close to the race day. Um, we will follow this up with a live Zoom call um, a couple of days before the race. That will be uh, a more general um, conversation, some tips and tricks We've got experience from people who've taken part. We've got experience from people who've raced on the course uh, just to make this the best possible day out for you. So I think that's all I've got to say. Uh, we'll see you on race day. Uh, thank you very much for listening in and uh, appreciate your time. Dave? Cheers, guys. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. And that's, that's us out.